Welcome to the West End Church of Christ. We are conveniently located at 4401 West Broadway. We have ample parking around the building as well as a parking lot that's located adjacent to the building. Our regular order of service is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. we have Bible study. Afterwards at 11 a.m. we have our morning worship. At 5 p.m. on Sundays we have our Sunday evening worship. We do have midweek Bible study Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and we have classes for all ages. At the Western Church of Christ we also offer a radio program called More Bible Talk. It is broadcasted from WLLV, that's 1240 AM on the radio dial, and 101.9 on the FM dial. The dates and times of the classes are Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 2 to 2.30 p.m. We also have a website. It is www.westncoc.com. On this website, you can retrieve lessons brought from the pulpit. Thank you very much. If you would like, you can mark your song books to page 640, 640. That will be the song immediately after the lesson. <clears throat> now, if you would, uh, let us turn our song books to page 356. And if it's comfortable for you, please stand. Page 356. When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? In it the troubles and cares of the story land, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful, wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear. continue on this evening talking about salvation. This is the lesson that was presented on this morning uh, for those of you that have never seen it before. And of course, we did not see it on this morning because 
of a lack of power. <laughs> but this is the chart on the plan of salvation. Understanding that God's word is true. Man. That in order to get heed to it, you first must know who God is. And that is what we discussed this morning from Romans 10, 17. Knowing who he is will allow you to believe in his son. Amen. And to do the things that are pleasing and acceptable unto him as well. Which will cause you to, or should, shall I say, because there are some that will not, to have a change of mind. Wanting to go in a different direction, repenting. Stated this morning that there are many of us that live lives that we are most definitely not pleased with. And not being pleased with something should cause you to want to change. And that change comes about by, again, turning away from those things and confessing who our Lord and Savior is, Jesus Christ. Knowing that, again, that is what the Word tells us that we need to do. And as we do that, we continue to be obedient and submit to baptism because baptism saves. Mm -hmm. Now, does hearing save you? Yes. Does believing save you? Yes. Repenting? Yes. Confession? Yes. And most definitely, we will not omit that God saves, mm -hmm. Jesus saves, the Holy Spirit saves. Amen. The individual that taught you, taught us the gospel, saves. And we ourselves have a part to play in our salvation. Amen. So therefore, we are obedient to baptism, and then we continue to study in order that we may grow. And the hope is that we live faithful until the very end. Yeah. <laughs> so that we may have salvation. Mm -hmm. If you're not looking forward to going to heaven, why are you here? Mm -hmm. If you're not looking forward to going to heaven, why are you here? Yeah. Well, Satan is here. <laughs> He wants to turn others away from the truth. Man. He's a coward. <laughs> he do not want to spend darkness and eternity alone. He's not going to be alone. Why do I say that? Because hell was prepared for Satan and his angels. Yes, but there are so many people that desire to go in that direction. I was talking to an individual back in 1989. He was a satanic worshiper. But you know what he believed in just as the devil and his angels believe in? God's word. The book that they used in order to, don't even know the word. It's hard to explain. But the book that they used to worship the devil, that same book refers them back to the book. Because without God, there would not be a devil. Amen. Everything goes. But we have to understand, since the devil knows that there is a God, and he fears God, he trembles, because he's done all that he could can do in his power to try to defeat the undefeatable. Mm -hmm. To try to get individuals to turn to him, which he's nobody. Mm -hmm. To worship him, which he deserves no worship. Amen. But the God that we serve, the God that has given us this plan, is the God that we need to fear and the God that we need to serve and the God that we need to tell others about. Amen. Because his plan would never change. I don't care what men say. I don't care how they say it. This plan will never change. Amen. 
appreciate Brother Mark for, for reading the scripture reference there uh, in the book of Ephesians and in the chapter is one because it, it deals with something and we're going to get to that in a minute but before we get to that I want to explain to you because it has been given to us revealed God has told us about himself. Now, you have to believe the word to believe what we're reading here. You have to believe the word. You don't believe the word, then all I can do is say, let's continue to study. <laughs> and I will do my very best to convince you that the word of God is true. For I said this morning, we teach or I teach what I believe because I believe what I teach. I stand by it. Because it is the truth. Man. Why do I say it's the truth? Because his word says the truth. I believe his word. Man. You know, there are movies out there that say, such and such said this, so therefore I believe it. God said this, so therefore I believe it. Man. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. And he says here in John chapter 4, verse 24, God is a spirit, and those that worship him Hasn't we worshiped him in spirit and in truth? No. Lack of days ago? No. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. Yeah. Now you probably say, why are you hollering? I'm not thinking about, you know, no power or anything like that. <laughs> I just want to get the point across to you <laughs> about who our God is because he's revealed these things to us. Amen. You know, I, I, I know your true colors, brother <laughs> Butch. You ever, somebody ever told you that? <laughs> Brother Brian, don't be looking over there, John. <laughs> I know exactly who you are because you have revealed it to me. That could be a good thing or that could be a bad thing. Yeah. Now, since God is a spirit, we can't touch him. Mm. He's the untouchable. Why is he untouchable? Because God don't want to be touched. You know, I, I, Brother Simmons sometimes will, will touch me and I would say, don't touch me. <laughs> or, or I just look down at the spot where he touched to let him know, don't touch me. It's nothing special about me. Not, not that I'm saying that's why he's touching me. I'm just saying, don't touch me. You know what I mean? We have that attitude about us sometimes because we think that we are so clean or so much better than anybody else. But our God is that person. Man. We can't touch him. With a Hundred foot toe. We cannot touch him. But you know what we can be? Or what we can do? We can be like him. God like. God like. And we you know we have to be like him. But there are some things that we will never be because we cannot possess the things in which he possesses. And one of those things that we talk about and look at is that our God is all knowing. Amen. All knowing. We cannot know what God knows. You know, there, there are some things that, yes, he has revealed to us, but there are some other things that we will never know. But he knows everything about us, but yet we don't know everything about him. Mm -hmm. We know enough. Mm -hmm. We know enough. We know enough that he does not want us to perish. We know enough that he will, you know, love us enough to give his only begotten son, to have him sacrifice. So that you and I could live. Amen. Well, why did he give his son? That, that question again, I, I asked that question this morning from the standpoint of a little child. Why did a man have to die? Because we serve a God that could raise him from the dead. Mm -hmm. That he would live throughout all eternity. But here in the book of Hebrews, the chapter is four. Hebrews in the chapter is four. And the verse is 13. No creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Mm -hmm. That word is again, must. All that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. All that worship him must give an account, and even those that will not worship him must give an account. Because he's gone. You, you ever created something? I asked you this question before. Have you ever created something and, and, and you flipped the switch and it didn't operate the way you wanted it to operate? What did you do? <laughs> you, 
Put it back to the drawing board. I wonder well, what's wrong with this thing. You take it apart, you put it back together, and you flip that switch again, it still don't work. Hmm. Oh, it, it, it's scrap. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Oh, God created us. And he wants us to operate in the manner in which he has created us. Yeah. And again, we're, we're going to see that in just a moment. But I want you to know that he's all knowing. Yeah. He knows when, 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 when you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. He knows when you are acting the way you're supposed to act. He knows these things. He knows what the parents have taught their children. He knows the things that the parents have not taught them, that they should have taught them. He knows these things. Again, we are naked and exposed to his eye. Amen. I don't care what you have on, God can see you. Amen. See through you. You know, we, we may be able to fool some people sometimes, but we can't fool God. Amen. Because he's all knowing. Then we find that he's all powerful. All powerful. You know, again, the illustration of this building. Uh, if I ask you, could you pick this building up? You, you say, no, I can't pick it up. But if this building is broke down brick by brick, you can pick up each brick one at a time. And some of you think you're strong and you try to get 10 or 15 at a time. You may be able to do that, but this whole building put together, you cannot pick it up. Amen. Do you know who can? Oh, God can. Amen. You, you think that the storm that came through again, he's in control of that storm where trees were uprooted, where, where shingles came off a building, siding came off a building, cars may have been overturned. Our God can do all of those things because he's gone. But at the same time, he can, he can fix those things. He's like, how did that roof come off that building and then it's set right back where it came from? How can that happen? Because we serve an all-powerful God. How can the sun stand still for an entire day? Because he's God. How could the Red Sea part and, and the children of Israel go over on dry ground? Because he's God. He's yeah. all-powerful. How can three enter into a burning fiery furnace and when one look in and they say, I see four, did we not throw in three? One looks like the Son of God. How can that be? Because he's gone. Yeah. All powerful. And they come out of there, the three, mm -hmm. as though they had never been in before. Mm -hmm. Not even the hairs of their head were singed. Their clothes didn't smell like they had been burned. That's gone. Yeah. We can't do those things. Yeah. You know, I want to I wanna walk through this fire and not get burned. <laughs> I wish you well. <laughs> I don't. There are some people that say, all I need is five minutes in hell. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I need no time in hell. And the Bible says it is hot. And I believe it is hot. Amen. I believe that the Bible says it is everlasting or eternal. I believe that. So five minutes, no, you're not going to be there five if you go. <laughs> it's your eternity because we serve an all-powerful God. And remember again, it was not created for you and I, but it was created for the devil and his angels. In Jeremiah chapter 32. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 32. Verse 17. Ah, oh, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Verse 27. Verse 27. Mm -hmm. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Mm -hmm. Since he first, J Jeremiah asked that question, you know, is anything too hard for him? And then the Lord, you know, as Jeremiah prophesies here, the Lord says, there is nothing, or is there anything too hard for him? He asked that question. Is there anything too hard for him? No. Amen. I've gotten myself into a predicament and I can't get out. How long, Lord? He can get you out. You know, I'm in trouble and I'm running. Who are you running from? You know, instead of running from someone, you should be running to someone. 
You know, you fear the one that can destroy the body, but yet you, you don't have any concern about the one that can destroy both body and soul in hell. That's who you need to fear. Amen. Because he's all powerful. There's nothing too hard for him. That, that's the answer. Nothing is too hard for our God. Amen. Nothing. He's ever present. Mm -hmm. What do you mean he's ever present? He's here right now. He, he's with us right now. Mm -hmm. When we go home, he's with us. When, when we lay down at night, he's with us. When we rise in the morning, he's with us. When we go to our jobs, he's with us. When, when we go to the ends of the world, he is with us. Amen. Because he is God, he is everywhere. How many of you can, can be everywhere? You know, you call up your friend, you say, oh, I'm with you in spirit. I wish I was there in the flesh. See, our God is with us in the spirit. Amen. And he doesn't have to say, I wish I was there in the flesh. We know he is here because his word tells us that he is here. He's ever present. But when we tell someone, you know, I, I'm there with you in spirit. I, I may not be able to make it in the morning, but I'm there in the spirit. It's not doing you any good because your spirit cannot be in two places at the same time. Amen. Cannot be. Yeah, you may be thinking about, you know, I said I was there in the spirit, but I wonder what they are doing. God knows what we're doing. Amen. He knows exactly what we're doing. We have to understand sometimes we ourselves don't know what we're doing, but God knows. And that's who we need to listen to. Amen. Psalm 139, verse 7 through 12. Psalm 139, verse 7 through 12. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall overcover uh, me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. Ever present. Just for a, a, a brief second. Some of y'all will do it and some of y'all won't. Close your eyes. What did you see? That was a brief second there, brother. Wood. You can open them now. <laughs> what did you see? It is a known fact when you close your eyes, 100% sure now, that you did not see anything. <laughs> but all was gone can see everything. Amen. No matter where you go, he is there. Look Amen. what that says again. Even the darkness is not dark to you. Is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. I'm going to turn the lights off. I'm going to hide from God. No, you're not. Amen. I'm in the garden. I'm going to hide from God. No, they didn't. He's there. He was there. He's here. And everywhere, Amen. our God sees all, all knowing, all powerful, and ever present. Amen. That is our God. But that's not all. He's ever just. See, man treat us all sorts of ways. Man don't care. You stand before a judge, and, and the judge know good and well that you are guilty. But yet, because you are a member of some club, he says that you are innocent. That's not justice. That's not justice at all. And sometimes that, that individual is bribed. And then they let you off. And then sometimes, you know, again, they, they know that you are innocent. Then they say that you're guilty. That's not the God that we serve. A lot of people say, I can't catch a break. No, but you can get into Christ. Mm -hmm. You can do what's right. Yeah, the world still may treat you wrong, but God is going to treat you right. Mm -hmm. Psalm 89, verse 11 through 14. The heavens are yours, the earth also is yours. 
the world and all that is in it, you have founded them, yes. the north and the south. You have created them, Tamar and Hermon, jealously, uh, joyously, praise your name. You have a mighty arm, strong is your hand, high your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Amen. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Now again, you walk into a courtroom and there the scales are. And you see the blindfold. And it says that Say loud. Justice is lying. <laughs> because everybody does not get a fair shake. There are some that there are preconceived ideals about this individual. There are times where you hear we have to move this, this trial to a, another county. Because so many people have already formulated the, 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 the guilty or the, the non-guilty verdict. They've already done that. So can you truly say that justice is blind? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a good idea, but it's not the truth. And it is not so true as this, that they say that God's word is true, but yet they're doing everything under the power of man, under the sun. There's no new thing. All the illegal things according to God's word, not man. Man has made them legal. Is that justice? According to God's word? It is not. But the God that we serve again, he is just, ever Amen. just. He's not going to change for you. Amen. Care how much money you have. Amen. Don't care about the color of your skin. He is not going to change what he has said for you. Again, verse 14, righteousness and justice were the foundation of your throne. This is God's throne, not man's. Mm -hmm. When you enter into his courtroom, you better watch out. That's what they say about man. But when you stand before God, you better watch out. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. He's going to treat everybody right. He's impartial. If you're guilty, you're guilty. If you're innocent, you're innocent. Come judgment, there's not going to be, you know, I, I think he's going to let me in. I, I know that I haven't done everything that I'm supposed to do. I think he's going to let me in. Don't think. <laughs> if you have not done what he told you to do, or told, he, if we have not done what he told us to do, we are not going to get in. Amen. Amen. Never just on. But he's also ever, ever holy. Amen. Here you find in Isaiah 6, 3 and Revelation 4, 8. It says it three times. We sing that hymn, holy, holy, holy. Mm -hmm. that, that's what it says here in, in, in Isaiah 6, 3. Isaiah 6, 3. Because this is talking again about our God. Isaiah 6, 3, it says, And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, these are the angels that, that are proclaiming this. And what we have done as men, we have adopted this. Because it is God's word. It is not going to change. If he was holy when they said it, he's holy today. <laughs> Why? Because he would never change. He's the same God. People say the God of the New Testament is different from the God in the Old Testament. The God in, in the Old Testament, boy, he, 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 had, he was full of wrath. <laughs> he, he took care of the people when they did wrong. It's the same God. Amen. He has not changed. He, he takes care of those that do wrong today or, or there is something that is reserved for them later. And he will take care of them. His justice is, is still swift. You know, that is what man says about man's justice, right? It is swift. But yet it takes time. But when, when it comes down to God, we still need to say his justice is swift because we know the punishment already for doing wrong. We're past judgment upon ourselves, 
by the word of God. Revelation 4 8. Revelation 4 8. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings and, and full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. That's all we're gone. Well, what can you take away from it? How many of you can, can possess all, an all-knowing mind? <laughs> Not one of us. Man. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> oh, you just, you, just, you just thought the right thing at the right time. <laughs> all powerful. Can't, can't nobody in here knock me down. <laughs> no, but there's somebody that can. <laughs> there's somebody that can. See, we, we, again, we have to know who God is. Amen. Now I'm going to duck and I'm going to dodge and I'm going to get away from you. Not God you won't. You may do it for man, but not God. How I many of you have jumped quick to a conclusion about something? Not God. He knew exactly what Ananias and Sapphira had done, did he not? Amen. Even before they opened up their mind, their, their, their mouth, you know, what, what did Peter say? You know, well, why has Satan did this to you? You know, you, you have a, you, you've lied to the Holy Spirit. You have not lied to, to man, but you have lied to God. It was just. Did Ananias and Sapphira get what they deserved? For lying to God? Or are we going to get what we deserve when we lie to it? Or are we going to be holy as he's holy? We're going to do what is right. It was this great God who, who planned the scheme of redemption. And I'm not talking about some trickery here. I'm just talking about a plan. And, and, and revealed it to us in the scriptures. Amen. He's given it to us. He's given it to us. So we look. And yes, that would be good, wouldn't it? Can I go back to it? I'm going back. Well, he was here too. Did y'all see that? <laughs> Promise of redemption. Redemption, the action of saving or being saved from sin. And that's what redemption is all about. Are you willing to accept the promise? You know, this promise is not made by man because what has man done with his promise? He's <laughs> gone back home. See, God is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. But he's long suffering to us that not anyone should perish, but all should come to repentance. Mm -hmm. Are we willing to, to accept the promise of redemption? God, God has always had man's best interest at heart. Why has God done this to me? Why did God make me the way he made me? You know, those are those people that don't know no better that say things like that. Because they don't want to accept who they are, how God has made them. But God has always had our best interest at heart. Brother, brother Mark again read that scripture reference from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Paul again is the writer here. And he says, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. See, God didn't call any of us to be apostles, but he called Paul <clears throat> on the road to Damascus. To go on to Damascus and listen to what a man by the name of Ananias would teach him. That he would be obedient unto the scriptures and be able to write what we're reading here today. He was baptized. Added to the body of Christ by the Lord himself according to the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 47. Grace to you in verse 2. And peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. See I'm not just... Paul writing here saying, oh, I'm just writing this to be writing to you. I'm writing because this is coming from God. Yeah. This is coming from Jesus. He said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. Verse 5, he predestined us for adoption as sons through Christ Jesus according to the purpose of his will. Man was not predestined, but the plan was Amen. and still is today. It's God's plan, not according to man, but it is God's plan. 
And so therefore, what we need to do is we need to look at it and we need to accept it. Don't change it. Don't try to, oh, I don't think that's what God really meant. Mm -hmm. It's not for us to think. It's up to us to do what God has said for us to do. We can have fellowship with him according to this plan. We can have fellowship with him. First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. We can have fellowship with him according to this plan. Again, McNally made those road maps. You remember those road maps you used to buy when you get ready to go on a trip? <laughs> it, it didn't come with an issue yellow highlighter. We purchased that. <laughs> Why? Because everybody else purchased it. Everybody else was highlighting their thing. And you called AAA, I believe it was, or one of those others, and they sent you a map, and it was highlighted too. What did you do? Did you follow that example or that road map that they gave you? Yes! Because you wanted to get from point A to point B. You've never been there before. If you had been there, well, now with you GPS, we've been there a million times, we're still on. <laughs> and we still go the wrong way. God's plan tells us how we can have fellowship with him. 1 John chapter 1, verse 3. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim to also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us, and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Verse 6. If we, if we say we have fellowship with him, while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. Yeah. Not, not some sin, but all sin. So, while tarries thou rise and be baptized, washing away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. See, that's what man needs to understand. That's what the plan will do for you. It will allow your sins to be washed away. Added to the body by the Lord himself. Let us fulfill the desire of him who created us. Again, you, you, you make something you want to operate the way you want it to operate. A robot, you know, you made a robot and you wanted to bring you breakfast in bed. That's exactly what you expect. Breakfast in bed, not breakfast on your head. <laughs> God's plan is what we need to follow. Our desire, or let us fulfill the desire of him who created us. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2. 1 Timothy, chapter 2. Verse 1. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people for kings, and for all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. I, I'm, I, I just can't bring myself to pray for him. <laughs> what, what you can't bring yourself to do is stand before God and say that you deserve to get into heaven. Amen. We, we, we're, we're commanded to pray for all men everywhere. Amen. Verse 3. This is good and is pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. We have conversations with people all the time about, you know, there's no separation between God and Jesus. There is a separation. And the separation is this. One is God the Father and one is God the Son. Yeah. And, and I'm not going to omit God the Spirit. Three beings in the Godhead. And here it says again, for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is a testimony given at the proper time. Promise of redemption. God did it. God loved us enough to give his son. A sacrifice is giving up something, and in this case, somebody mm -hmm. that you love. Love. Amen. He loved us. 
enough to give his son mm -hmm. that we may be able to live. Are we willing to accept that? To have e eternal access to the tree of life. Eternal access, ne never to be turned away, never to have anything set in front of it that you cannot get to it. Adam and Eve would put out the garden for that purpose because they went against what God said. Man, I'm going to have to put man out of the garden so just in case he eat from the tree of life. See, the serpent was real smart, wasn't he? But Adam and Eve wasn't too bright in this situation. God told them what tree not to eat from, did he not? He told them what tree it was next to, did he not? Do not eat from the tree that is in the midst of the garden of, 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 of good and evil that is next to the tree of life. Don't eat. They didn't give it a second thought. Why? Because in their minds at that time, or should I say in Adam's mind at that time, he wasn't going to eat from that tree. He didn't have to think about the tree of life. But when the serpent came and beguiled Eve, she thought that it was good. And, and she gave it to her husband, and, and he ate from it as well. And then they were put out of the garden. But what are we trying to get back to? We're trying to get back to the tree of life. Amen. Where man had, 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 is, 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 you know, guarding the guests right now, but trying to get back to it. Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. Revelation 21, verse 3. And, be, and, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as they're gone. Be with man. He's going to be with you and I when we get into heaven. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, neither there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Revelation 22, verse 14. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life, and that they may enter the city by the gates. We can't sneak in. We enter the city by the gates. Mm -hmm. There's one entrance into heaven. Remember again, it is through our Lord and Savior Jesus to Christ. And we must follow what the word says in order to be able to get there. And the only way we're going to get there is if, if our work is pleasing to God. Yeah. We will find rest. Only if our work is pleasing to God. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 9 through 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 9 through 14. What gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has put eternity into man's heart. Yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in his own toil. This is God's gift to man. I perceive that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done it. So the people fear him. That which is has already been, that which is to be, already has been. And God seeks what has been driven away. There is a place that has been prepared for you and I. Are we willing to accepted. Are we willing to do what is right before God? If not, why not? If not, why not? Amen. This purpose again is exactly what God wants us to have. Exactly the things that God wants us to do. So maybe you're here this evening you're not a child of God. You're not part of the family of God and you want to become part of it. Remember again the plan of salvation. That you come and you make that confession that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. 
that you're being merged in a watery grave of baptism, washing away your sins, rising to walk in newness of life, living a life that is pleased to him so that in the end you may hear, enter in my good and faithful servant. There are some that have strayed away. There are some that have fallen short. <clears throat> We're asking you this evening to come back. We're praying that you may come back before it's everlasting too late. Amen. If you're here in your subject, we ask you to please come <clears throat> as we stand and sing the invitation hymn. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Yes. Yeah. 